G'day and welcome to episode 8 of the DIY Laser Build. In this video I'll show you how I install the laser tube, the amp meter, the water flow sensor switch and connecting that to the laser power supply as well as some connections to the water chiller that I purchased. Now in this video I'm not going to go into in depth on how to align the laser beam. There are a lot of good resources out there for aligning your laser and your mirrors but I will just briefly explain how it's done. And I'd also like just to add that the audio quality in some parts of this video are not the greatest and I do apologize for that. So I've got my laser tube here ready to install and I've um, just released it from the carton. So I'm going to carefully remove that from the box so that we can see it a little bit easier. Just be very careful with it. First of all, inspect it for any breakage and make sure that we don't have any cracks or anything like that on our laser tube. So just um, having a look, we have, uh, you can see that Cloudray have uh, pre-wired uh, the anode and the cathode of the laser tube. So that's the uh, positive end and the negative end of the laser. They've pre-wired it so there's no need to do any soldering directly to the laser tube itself. So if we have a look at this positive end or the anode side of the laser tube, we'll see that we have this gla glass inlet and that's for the water inlet and that goes into the laser tube. You can see that on the inside of the tube that we have a spiral glass section for the water to run through. That then goes into the laser firing tube itself and if we look closely we see we have an outer tube. The inner tube is what the water runs through and on the inside of that tube is the, uh, the firing or the discharge pipe. So this tube is a Cloudray CR90 uh, watt and uh, as we move along the tube we'll also see at the other end we have our uh, cathode side which is also pre-wired up. At the other end of the tube, the uh, cathode side of the tube, we can see that we have a water outlet on this metal head. So that is our uh, water out and on the positive side water in. So the way that you would uh, position it is that we would have the water out sitting at the top of the laser tube. So this pre-installed uh, water pipe here will be in the orientation of uh, being up vertically. So we don't want to install it upside down. So we have water coming in from the bottom of the tube and exiting through the top of the tube and then back down and out. Now it is important that any wiring connections on the high voltage lead that goes to the laser power supply that it is well insulated. Cloudray provided this insulation uh, connector on the uh, positive wire. So what we need to do is wire up the positive lead that comes from the power supply, solder it to this one and then what we can do is uh, insulate that connection with this uh, high voltage insulator and then fix it in place with some electrical tape so that it doesn't move. It's very important to keep it insulated because the high voltage side of the laser power supply has flyback transformers that can store tens of thousands of volts which is enough to arrest your heart. So make sure that your soldering connections are secure and that the insulation is in place. So I'm going to make sure that I solder this uh, well and insulate it well prior to installing it into the laser tube mounts in the back of the machine. Okay, so first of all I have the high voltage lead that gets plugged into the laser power supply and I have uh, stripped that of the uh, insulation and we're going to feed this onto here. We have the other side of the insulating connector attached to the anode uh, of the laser tube and we're going to uh, twist these together and solder them securely. Next what we want to do is uh, move the two connectors over the top so that it's insulated in the centre. These are clip closed and then to make sure that it doesn't move we can uh, put some tape around the sides of the connector so that it doesn't slide up and down. Okay. 
So there we have our connection. The uh, insulator is in the middle, it can't be opened up until we remove the electrical tape so we know that's going to be well insulated there. Now this will need you to get connected to the laser power supply which we'll do in a moment. The next thing we need to do is uh, pop it into the machine. So we'll just carefully remove the foam. So what I'd like to do is put some uh, insulation tape around this so it's just to protect it so that it's not just glass directly onto the alloy support, or support brackets. Just to give it a little bit of a cushioning you can use some uh, rubber there if you like and uh, tape that into place. Now I'll be uh, using a, a beam combiner unit in between mirror one and the end of the laser tube. So I'll be leaving approximately uh, three to four inches there and this can be adjusted at a later date. Now the uh, design of my machine is that this uh, top panel comes off so that I can easily access uh, the mirrors for mirror alignment. So what I'm going to do is just remove that now. And then I can just lift this out. The cathode or the negative electrode of the laser tube is also pre-wired with this uh, negative cable. And that would run to the milliamp meter and then from the milliamp meter to the negative connection on the power supply for the laser. So I'm going to wire this in at the same time to my milliamp meter. Positioning the laser head, uh, you can, if you don't have uh, a beam combiner unit going in here, you can actually move the laser head quite close to mirror number one, just about uh, 25 to 30 mils or a couple of inches and uh, we can um, align it that way. Now what I'm going to be doing for this machine is also installing a beam combiner or a red dot beam combiner. And this is my unit here so a red dot beam sits in here and will bounce directly off this uh, zinc selenide lens that's going to be placed in this position so optical light will reflect off that or deflect off it. The non-visible light from the laser beam will pass directly through it and uh, that way it will be, combines the beam of non-optical light with the optical red dot. So I need to leave enough space in there for this to be mounted and um, I haven't mounted it yet because I want the positioning to be spot on. We'll go into that position there so I'm leaving enough space between there to be able to adjust this. So there's no correct distance uh, that uh, the end of the laser needs to be from mirror one so long as the uh, direction of the light is um, parallel and uh, is all lined up properly. Um, it doesn't matter if this is 20 mils, 30 mils this way or two inches. Obviously get it as close as you can but um, there's no rule as to how far away it can be from the, lay of the first mirror. So now that I've got the laser tube in there I'm going to connect it up to the laser power supply and to the milliamp meter. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll connect up the water. Okay, so on our laser power supply, on the back we have the red cable with the connector. We can connect those now. Nice and secure. The white cable is the negative cable that goes to the cathode on the laser tube, so the negative connection on the laser tube. And in this case I'm going to be wiring it into the milliamp meter. So I'll pop a wiring diagram up on the screen on how to wire in your milliamp meter to the laser tube. Uh, a milliamp meter is a good thing to have to keep an eye on your laser power and things like that to monitor the output of the tube. But also this power supply does have a digital readout. It's just not in a convenient spot to be able to read it. Although when the machine is on through the uh, transparent perspex that will be in front of this, we can uh, read it okay but it's nice to have it nice and handy up on the uh, top of the machine near the control panel. So this is the milliamp meter that will be wired into the cathode side of the laser tube. So part of the design of this machine is that uh, if I need to change the controller at all uh, then um, I've got a panel separate from the main piece of acrylic that covers the top of this machine. So 
so I can uh, take this out and uh, add gauges, switches, change controller size or even replace that acrylic there if I want to in the future. So the back part, uh, so that I have access to it, we've just got two screws into the T that I can uh, undo. And once they're undone, then I'll be able to just lift one side, slide this out and uh, access the inside of the machine. And that's the same for the other side. And here I'm just uh, installing the water pipe that goes uh, to the laser tube. So I'm going to start at this end and we're going to secure it with uh, cable ties to make sure that they fit securely and that they don't leak. So this is outlet and outlet uh, will be on this side. So I just uh, connect it on the inside here and secure it. So down here I have my water flow sensor and that has got an arrow printed on the top of it which is the direction of water flow for the water. Now the arrow points in the direction towards the laser tube. Off that we have a lead which has two wires attached and they get wired into the laser power supply. So the P here is for the protect on the power supply and that is wired to the water flow sensor switch and it also connects to ground. So from the water flow sensor we have the P and the G and that provides protection for the laser tube to make sure that we have water flowing. If you try to pulse your laser, there's no water flow, then the laser power supply will uh, protect the laser tube by not firing. If you have a faulty water flow sensor, you can test to see whether your sensor is faulty by putting a jumper wire between P and G so that this circuit is closed and that the laser power supply thinks that there is water protection switch there. And if you pulse the laser and it fires, it means that you need to replace your water flow protection switch. Obviously, it's very important not to run your machine constantly with a jumper between there, but for a quick test pulse with water in the tube, um, we test it that way to see whether there's a, a fault with your switch. When you're installing your laser tube, it's very important to make sure that the laser tube is uh, parallel and level with the rail itself. So you adjust those using tube mounts here, making sure that this is level with the rail. Once you have a good uh, level uh, beam, then you can start aligning it up to mirror number one. Now when you're lining up the end of the laser tube to mirror number one and you pulse your laser, you're trying to get the dot as close to the centre as possible. After you've lined mirror number one and it's pulsing on the centre, we want to direct that down to mirror number two. And you want to get the laser beam to be pulsed into the centre of the mirror. And that pulse needs to be in the centre here, as well as when it's at the top of its stroke up this end. So adjust it until it's directly in the centre and pulsing on top of each other. For those that have not done a mirror alignment before, there's these three brass knobs on the back which move the mirror and help you to direct the beam in the right direction. So if I was to tighten the top knob, it would push the top of the mirror down, which would bring our laser beam down. If I was to do the same to the bottom one here, it would push this bottom corner across and it would bring it up and in inwards and then the same for the bottom one. So you can uh, have a play around with those that only need very small adjustments each time and uh, if you go too far then your laser beam is not going to bounce to the next mirror, it's going to be way off. So just uh, adjust, adjust little bits at a time. After you've got mirror 2 correctly aligned then what we need to do is bounce that across to mirror 3 and we'll be looking at the opening at the top of the laser head there and we want to get it directly in the centre of that as close as possible. And uh, we do that at the far direction as well as while it's closer at this direction. It needs to be pulsing in the same spot on all four corners of the laser bed. So after you've aligned the beam from mirror 2 to mirror 3, then the final direction would be the downward direction. So we adjust this so that the laser beam is coming directly out the centre of the nozzle. Without it coming directly out of the centre of the nozzle, it could deflect off the side of the nozzle and you will get uh, poor cutting. 
Now for a laser machine this size it is uh, helpful to have someone with you to do the mirror alignment so that they can move the laser head and pulse while you're looking and adjusting. Just bear in mind that you need to make sure that before each person presses the pulse button that all hands and uh, eyes are out of the way of the laser beam and wear safety glasses when doing so. So the safety glasses I use are these ones here from Cloudbray that fit, slip directly over the top of my glasses. Now if you don't have someone to help you with your laser beam alignment and your machine's as big as mine and walking backwards and forwards to the control panel can be quite tedious and uh, quite annoying at times, then in a future video I'll show you how to make a long lead that will attach directly to your laser power supply so you can pulse the laser each time, obviously keeping your hands and eyes clear of that and uh, that just makes the job a lot easier when you're aligning the mirrors on your own. So before we go, what I'm going to do is just uh, do a quick keychain and show you how the laser operates. So we've got the power here, you power it on, and the noisy part being the chiller coming on. Now the chiller that I chose was the CW5200, or in this case the CW5202. CW5202 is, is a 5200 chiller that has uh, capability of running to two different laser tubes. So if you have a dual laser tube machine or you're running two machines, you can use a 5202. If I'm using a single tube on a single machine, then this needs to be looped so that the water doesn't flow out all over on the floor. Up the top here I've got some switches, which is the laser power supply on, as well as the lights. One thing I've found about the Trosen controller is that it uh, works extremely well with light burn straight out of the box and it just connects really easy. So I've got this keychain designed here in Lightburn with the power and speed settings that I want. And you can see down here it's got the other machine connected, which is the Reweeder. I can just select down here to the Trosen controller. It'll change the bed size uh, automatically to the larger bed size. And uh, if we just zoom in on what we're going to do, we can see we're going to make this little keychain. And it's very easy just to click send and send that directly to the controller. And that file comes directly through to the controller and something that is useful is it shows where the uh, origin point for that file is. So we just origin that, check where it is, if it's good, and we can start. So I've really enjoyed building this uh, laser machine and getting it this far. I hope it inspired you to maybe build your own laser machine as well, uh, or even just some of the uh, tips and tricks along the way may help you with your own uh, laser machine adjustments and settings. So I, I do these videos to help people out and I hope you've enjoyed it. The mechanical components, the electrical components and the laser tube were provided by Cloudray Laser for me to provide this video to you. Uh, along with a lot of research time and uh, the time involved in assembling this and the cost of the material for the outside enclosure. It's been uh, quite a long process for me because I've had to raise funds to do that and to provide you with this video series. If you'd like to uh, support me financially, you can by PayPal and you'll find a link to that on my website on the DIY Laser Build page at mwlaser.com.au. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already watched the previous videos, you can go through the whole series again from part one. And uh, until next time, take care. Cheers.